Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Oscar Film Forecast, where we are giving you our first 2021 predictions. The ceremony is in about three months, and the nominations are in about two months. So we only have a few more chances here to get in our last predictions for nominations. I'm joined by Ben Campbell. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me back. I very yes. much appreciate it. No problem. And uh, let's just get into it. I'm going to bring up Gold Derby. So let's start with Best Picture. So I have Nomadland currently at number one, then Trial, then The Father, then Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, then One Night in Miami, Mank, Minari, Judas, Soul, and The Five Bloods as my top 10. That is a good top 10. I think you've definitely narrowed down some of the main films that are in contention, but you've left off a film that I think will be nominated for Best Picture. And it comes, me personally, um, num yeah, number yeah. one. Um, when it comes to ranking like number one, number two, I don't necessarily think number one is most likely to win. I think mm -hmm. you kind of need to wait a little bit longer to get a good idea of who has the word in the bag. But obviously at the mm -hmm. moment, it's looking like Nomadland is number one. So I have that number yeah. one. Number two, I unfortunately have Mank. I know you didn't like it. I haven't even seen it. Uh, I, can, I can see a reality where Mank doesn't even get nominated. Just because that that's a movie that I would think critics would like more than the um, Academy members. And there's been a lot of critics um, and their associations and their nominations not even nominating it. But, what did you think of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood then? I didn't like that movie, but I think that okay. appeals more to the um, Academy than Mank does. It's more entertaining. Oh, wow, okay. Mank is not entertaining. Well, I suppose I have to watch the movie, but recently I've watched almost all of David Fincher's movies because I'm mm -hmm. at some point going to watch Mank, but I suppose yeah. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Number three, Trial of the Chicago 7. Do you even yeah. have... Oh, yeah, you do. It's at number two. Um, four, The Father. Five... Yes. The next two are films I didn't like, but are likely going to get nominated. That's One Night in Miami and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I thought yeah. they were both just medium. Yeah, they're they're both, I think, pretty much locks. I don't see either of them winning. Mm -hmm. even. They're, you both. know the kind of stock nominations that you have, like, say, mm -hmm. films like The Favourite that have no chance at winning, but are, like, I'm not comparing them quality-wise. The Favourite's better than both of them, but it's like, this film isn't going to win, well, it definitely is a lot to get nominated. I think that is likely what those two films are. Seven is Minari. Those are the seven I definitely see getting nominated. Um, my number eight is Promising Young Woman. That's only because yeah. I see there's a kind of some momentum going. Now, will they keep it going? I don't necessarily know. But I see it as when it comes to the films that are very much in play, like The Five Bloods, Promising Young Woman, Judas and Soul, I see Promising Young Woman ahead of them all at the moment. Mm -hmm. So nine is Judas and 10 is a flip-flop between Soul and the Five Bloods. Right now, I have Soul. Mm -hmm. That's, That's pretty, my top yeah. 10. If I were to have an 11, it would probably be Promising Young Woman. But I, just looking at Letterboxd, the film is um, surprisingly more controversial um, than I would have expected. I liked pretty much how everything played out, but I don't know. It could be a little, some Academy members may not like it. I suppose we'll see because I, they have brought in more people to make sure that more experimental films get mm -hmm. nominated. You know, I see Promising Young Woman very much as like the get out of the season, um, yeah. where I think it should be a lock for acting, picture, and at least screenplay. I also have Emerald Fennel in my director kind of hopeful list. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I see struggling. it probably more as a like I, Tanya, where it gets a good amount of nominations, but for some reason they just don't nominate it for picture. Well, same as Promising Young Woman, I, Tanya was also my favorite movie of 2017. Mm -hmm. So that would be a pattern there. Do yeah. you have any films when it comes to Best Picture that you think, you know, also have an outside shot. I have, I think, five. Um, I think Malcolm and Marie has a shot. 
I think Sound of Metal has a shot, which is exciting for me. That's one of my favorites of the year. Um, I people have news of the world pretty high. I just, I, I guess it could happen. I just there's the movie's been out and no one's talking about it at all. That would be very much a the post kind of nomination. Yeah, um, that's about it. Do you? I have, yeah, I I got five. So, as I said, the five bloods. That's not my thing. That that would be my number eleven. The other five are. This is a weird one. Hillbilly Elegy. So, oh yeah. yeah, I watched that movie, and you know I can understand why people hate it. I do think it's very poorly written, and I do think it is very. It identifies a very important problem, but offers zero solutions, and mm. only takes a look at this one person who finds himself in one circumstance that you know just so happens to lead him to a successful path. Mm -hmm. But um, I do think that it was certainly a kind of watchable movie you know you two amazing performances with amy adams and glenn close yeah. especially glenn close who was just phenomenal she was um, but hillbilly elegy i just think it could strike a chord with those voters you know the type who we're talking about who won't like promising young woman but they will like hillbilly elegy those mm -hmm. kind of movies you know i could maybe see that happening i don't think it's likely but if there were going to be an upset particularly for the golden globes i think Hillbilly Elegy, like uh, Hillbilly, El Hillbilly Elegy, and News of the World are very much Golden Globes movies that I see yeah. maybe happening. Yeah, they are. Speaking of News of the World, that is my other movie, News of the World. Uh, mm. I I find it very funny how it's like number seven or like eight on Gold Derby, uh, because that yeah. movie I just see zero chance of getting a nomination, or at least I hope. Fingers and toes crossed. It just doesn't seem all that good. And there's been like no campaigning for it either, which mm. is surprising. The other two films you've said, Sound of Metal, Malcolm and Marie, mm -hmm. outside shots, but we need to get more closer to what nominations are they getting? Are they just acting plays and like mm -hmm. technicals like cinematography, sound, or will they break into picture? You know, we, we, we need to see. But mm -hmm. my, final, my final pick is uh, something that's very upsetting to me because I watched Pieces of a Woman and I thought that movie was absolutely amazing. Like oh, it was just yeah. so good. But it's only getting actress, actor buzz, you know? Like, I thought it was just such a very well-written, well-acted, well-directed, choreographed, great-looking movie. It was just phenomenal, in my opinion. So I am very upset that it is not in contention for Best Picture. But look, that's just the way the dice roll sometimes. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, Pieces of Woman, you have zero chance, but you deserve one, so I'm mentioning you. Yeah, right down here with the likes of King of Staten Island and Emma. So, that sucks for them. The fact that yeah. it's below I'm Thinking of Ending Things makes me really yeah. upset. That does, I like I'm Thinking How is it below things. Ammonite? Uh, it is below Ammonite, yeah. And Palm Springs. How? Yeah. They must not rank them in like all, the most likely. They all yeah, that's... the same shot, pretty much. The same chances. Yeah. Yeah, I think you probably liked that film more than I did. I thought it was um, a good start. Like the first act was great and it was kind of so-so from there on, but the performances are definitely the best parts, which we'll be getting to. You will yeah, indeed, yes. Yeah, so do you have any other honorable? Oh, no, no, no. I was just saying, yeah, that's picture for me. That's it. Oh, okay. Um, do, you, do you have any idea of who you think could win right now? Best picture? Yeah. Do you think it's still too early? I think it's kind of still too early. I don't know. It is a bit too early for me. I think we can definitely rule out Ma Rainey and Minari. No, not, not Minari. Maybe Minari, if, we, if we're being honest. But also One Night in Miami. Mm -hmm. I think we can rule those two out. I think they're very likely for a nomination. That's it. I see maybe even being like a ladybird, both of them, where they win nothing. I, I can maybe see that, especially for One Night in Miami. I think Ma Rainey's definitely at least got a lock in actor, but mm. uh, yeah. yeah. I think um, pretty much the films with the best shot, I could see Nomadland winning. It's a little too indie, but sometimes they go with the indie movie. Trial of Chicago 7 still has a shot. Um, I think The Father truly could win. Oh, I, I've seen The Father recently, and it's probably <laughs> my favorite film of the year so far. I don't know. It's it's wow. amazing, but it, I don't know. 
it could possibly. It just doesn't seem like the kind of movie that they go for a picture. Uh, I think maybe Judas is a big um, wild card too. Judas sold the Five Bloods, Promising Young Woman. They're my wild card. You know, they need to. Are they going to get nominated? And if they get nominated, we need to see what like the campaigns are and the buzz mm-hmm. is. What's the word of mouth being like? I would love to see Promising Young Woman, and like that's just movies all are so good. But you know, it's likely not going to happen and it's likely a pipe dream but as of right now I would say the film with the most that's most likely to win is probably Nomadland but I haven't seen that so I don't really know yeah yeah that's pretty much it for picture I think the nominations are pretty kind of clearing themselves out a little with like one or two open spots but definitely no Mm -hmm. current front runner for winning um so now we're on to best director which I think the clear person who's going to win is Chloe Zhao. Fincher will get nominated. Um, then I have Aaron Sorkin, Florian Zeller for The Father. And I've been on and off with this fifth spot, but I swapped out Isaac Lee Chung for Regina King in the fifth spot. We so have the same think. top two, but then the rest it just completely falls away. Yeah. I think Sorkin uh, kind of, I think Sorkin is definitely going to get nominated. I unfortunately kind of agree, but I also just don't want it to happen. Yeah. It was weak directing, but... It was the editing did the directing for him, almost, yeah. you know? Like, it's going to win editing, I, like, as, as a kind... As a, yeah, as it should. But, you know, I have Chloe Zhao number one, and when it comes to a lock, she is it. Um, David Fincher for Mank. Uh, Lee Isaac Chung for Minari. I don't know about this one, but I just thought, you know what? I'll throw him a bone. I'll give him at number three. Aaron Sorkin, number four. And I have a lot of honorable mentions, which I'll get to. But my number five is the ultimate manifestation of Emerald Fennel getting a nomination for Promising Young Owen. It's just the biggest manifestation that I personally have. But I would love to see it. Yeah, I would like to see it too. She did a great job. Um, Yeah. For Lee Isaac Chung, Minari, I'm kind of... I don't know. I'm kind of losing faith in a little, a, a little bit, just because it's a twenty-four, um, and they're not really that great mm. for campaigns. I'm kind of seeing it more as a farewell, where it may get a few nods, but I don't think it's going to be a big contender. So I kicked him out. The farewell was very good, so Minari will be very lucky to be in its level, but it will also be very unlucky because the farewell was completely shut out. Mm-hmm. It was, sadly. Do you have any? honorable mentions or um, dishonorable mentions in some case i think spike lee definitely has a shot um it's the five bloods a few months ago lots of people were saying it had no shot at all like getting any nominations but it's kind of there hasn't even been any campaigning but it's definitely been rising up again in the rank so i think he definitely has a shot emerald Fennell. it really depends on if the academy goes for the movie which right now i don't think they will completely commit to the movie like they did to get out so she has a shot i think um george c wolf i probably has a shot too but other than that i don't see anyone else really i have the ultimate semi-depressing list for you um regina king one night in miami i don't think she should be nominated but i think she could be nominated yeah uh so i have her florian zeller for the father i think he has a very strong chance Mm -hmm. Because The Father, it's supposed to be a very well-directed movie. It puts you in Anthony Hopkins' shoes. Is that true? It's crazy. He did it. I hope he gets nominated. He's my four. He really deserves it. I really think he has a chance. Also, because it's like, it's his play, isn't it? He wrote it too. Yeah. Yeah, So I think that gives him a good story. Spike Lee, The Five Bloods. It was a very good movie. I would really enjoy seeing Spike Lee get a director nomination after, you know, making a very good movie. I was... Not going to watch The Five Bloods because I really didn't like Black Clanton. I found it kind of boring. Um, but this movie, very, very, very good. Very I love The Five Bloods. Yeah, that's great. Pete Doctor, Soul. Is it going to happen? No. Oh, but I, he's well, worth mentioning. Totally, totally worth it. But I don't even see him on this list. Animation directors need more credit. It's insane. Never get any. He's not even on here. My goodness. Seriously? Oh yeah, my god, no. that is crazy. Joe Wright for The Woman in the Window, a film that hasn't even come out. 
yeah. is on that list. But oh, poor Pete Doctor is not. Okay, perhaps I am wrong about that then. Uh, Shaka King in Judas yeah. and the Black Messiah. Yeah. Because it's getting a lot of director hype from the people who have seen it. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. Sorry. Oh, it was I, worth if I made a weird face, I just saw Patty Jenkins on this list. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's worthy of making a weird face, if I'm being honest. Yeah. 100%. But then yeah, I have two who I would really go ahead, sorry. Oh no, it's okay. I was just gonna say I think Shaka King has a shot. Um he hasn't uh I, I think it's a man. Um, he hasn't done a lot of campaigning, but um hmm. maybe once the film releases. I think you do have to if you're an unknown director, kinda like they are, um you gotta campaign a little bit in order to get that spot. Hmm. I would like to see a new talent breakthrough. Yeah. That's very nice to see. I love when that happens. Uh, but then I have like the shame list of two people who unfortunately are still kind of high up, but who shouldn't be. Paul Greengrass oh. in News of the World. Yeah. Uh, I, I just not. keep seeing him there and he's really bothering me. And if he yeah. takes up a slot that could go to someone like Lee Isaac Chung or Florian Zeller or Emerald Fennell or Spike mm -hmm. Lee, that's what he's doing. He's blocking them and I'd be very upset. He got nominated. And then George C. Wolfe from Our Rainy, because it was not a very well-directed movie, in my opinion. It just was very boring. Uh, the screenplay barely carried it. I didn't even think it was that well-written. There was just some good monologues in there. But, you know, people disagree with me. George C. Wolfe, I just see him there as well. And I would just like to see it go to a more exciting talent, because Ma Rainey wasn't particularly exciting to me. Yeah. I, yeah, the directing wasn't really that great. It did kind of still feel like a stage play. I think Regina King made hers less like a stage play than Ma Rainey was, but I think it's kind of just... Had more than name. one location. Yeah, it's the name that's going to get her in that fifth slot, I think. And she is also doing campaigning right now. But yeah. The movie has 98% in Rotten Tomatoes. It's crazy. It does? One Night in Miami? Yeah, 98 that's the high percentage, yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> I mean, I would give it a fresh score, but mm. not a very high fresh score. So that's probably why it's that high. Um, yeah, so this, this category is kind of like who else wants to get like a nomination, that honor, um, because Chloe Zhao is definitely going to be winning no matter what. Um, mm. Yeah, is that well, all? Well, do you I've... think it will it be like a sweep where – Nomadland wins screenplay, director, and picture, or will they split it? Because I think there's an opportunity for them to split it. I think she also was the editor of the film, too. So if it wins editing, that would be crazy. Holy um, shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I could Spike see her. Lee, just, I could see Alfonso Coron moment. Director. What? It'll be like an Alfonso Coron moment where he won three oh, Oscars yeah. for Roma. Yeah. That's crazy. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think they're going to spread it a little. I don't. It doesn't seem like a screenplay kind of movie to me, but I haven't seen it. Um, but mm. she could win. I don't think she will right now if she wins director, but could be a sweep. I don't know. Need Basically, to... what we're saying here is that it would be great if David Fincher and Aaron Sorkin were not nominated. Yes, and especially not you, Sir Greengrass. I haven't seen your movie, but I don't know. number seven. Like, what, what the hell? I know, crazy. At least it's it's gonna be a more diverse lineup than usual. Mm. Okay, so that's all for director. Now we are off to best actress, where this is the trickiest acting category for me. I have a lot of trouble with this category. At one, really, I, I think it's the easiest. I think it's the easiest who's getting nominated. I think I'm struggling as who's gonna win. I have no clue right now. So right now I have Vanessa Kirby at one. Then Francis McDormand, then Viola Davis, then Carrie Mulligan, then Zendaya. I think those are kind of mm. five pretty much locks. I don't really see anyone else getting in, but I just don't I agree. Know. I think all of them have shots at winning right now. The way I've broken it down is this. As of right now, Carrie Mulligan has kind of taken, like Piece of Woman came out a weekend ago. People mm -hmm. aren't really talking about it. Carrie Mulligan has kind of taken like Pieces of a Woman and just kind of stole its momentum and it kind of brought it into itself. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I have Carrie Mulligan at number one. Number two is Vanessa Kirby in Pieces of a Woman. I would, like to, I would love to see either of those two win. They both deserve to win. 
Mm-hmm. Harry Mulligan, I think that performance is ground... Not, Yeah, I would say groundbreaking, but also iconic. I think it could go down as one of those iconic film performances. Mm-hmm. I compared it... Um, when I first saw it, I texted some people. I said, it's like Uma Thurman in Kill Bill. I think it's that level of iconic. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the way I felt about it. And so I personally would give her number one as of right now again we need to just wait for a little bit but yeah number th- again these are all locks so it doesn't really matter what order they're in mm-hmm. number three francis mcdormand nomadland also has a strong chance at winning but i think as you have two very new and exciting performances rise giving her a third oscar i was kind of objected to giving her a second one yeah. so to give her a third one i think that that's narrative is getting category. less and less compelling what that's Meryl Streep level, three Oscars. That's how many she has. Wow. I don't know if she's on that level exactly. Mm, I think she's a great actress. Like, she truly. Is, yeah. mm. uh, but again, we'll see with Frances. Again, we'll see what happens at the Golden Globes where I feel like it's a, maybe it's a Bradley Cooper, Rami Malek thing where two of them are neck and neck until like an award show actually happens and Rami Malek wins and then that just builds other momentum. Mm. Yeah, maybe it could happen like that. Yeah. Number four, Viola Davis, because she was a supporting character. So I think yeah. also giving her a second actor, giving her a second Oscar, is getting less and less compelling as well. Like with Frances McDormand for a performance that she's barely in the movie. Now she was very good in what she was in, yeah, which is not in a lot of it. No. And then number five, the Timothy Chalamet of the year, Zendaya. Mm-hmm. I see her as the Timothy Chalamet in um, Call Me by Your Name, being welcome you know you have a chance you you are going to be nominated you're going to be here forever you'll win at another point uh you're gonna ha- you're gonna get a lot of fans and you may win like there's there was always that chance for timothy to win yeah. but at the same time we have some other things we're going to reward but you very much congratulations welcome to the club that's kind of the way i see that at the moment mm-hmm. yeah i think Right now, she's the least likely twin, but when the movie comes out, if it's, like, crazy, like, hype for her, I think she could definitely climb up. Um, I wonder if Viola Davis was ran and supporting if she'd have a better shot. Um, but I think, I they think wanted she to, would. Yeah, I think they wanted to run her in lead, though, because she already won for supporting mm-hmm. in a performance that was more lead, honestly, but... Odd, odd category placements. Um, yeah, this is a tricky one. I hate when they do that. Yeah. Yeah, I have no clue who's going to win this, but I think those five are locks. Yep, I agree. Okay. Sorry, everyone else who thinks they have a chance yeah. of being nominated. Yeah. Sorry, Elizabeth Moss. I would have loved for you to be nominated. But they're not. It was very good. Maybe for the Golden Globes. Who knows? Maybe, yeah. Um... Or Critics' Choice could totally give it to Elizabeth Moss because Lupita Nyong'o. Just because the SAG SAG gave it to Lupita, I think. Oh, yeah. Memories, you know. Yes. Uh, The Critics' Choice may have given it to Lupita, too. I don't know. Um, But now on to Best Actor. Uh, Chadwick is still number one. Anthony Hopkins for The Father, obviously, number two. Riz Ahmed, I have at three. Four, Delroy Lindo. Fifth, the fifth spot is kind of open right now. Anyone yes. can take it. Right now, I'm giving it to Kingsley Benadir for One Night in Miami. Your top, again, the top four is essentially locked in. They're solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have Anthony Hopkins at number one because it just seems like a more, a more different, like you, you've had monologues and movies before with Chadwick Boseman. However, he is mm-hmm. almost unbeatable. However, the only reason I have Anthony Hopkins right now is because a lot of people are saying, you know, what he does is truly amazing. It is. Anthony Hopkins. I, I think it will be. He only I, has one Oscar, doesn't he? He does only have one, yeah. And I think it's better than his performance in this is better than his performance in Silence of the Lambs. It's easily the best performance of 2020, in my opinion. But the Chadwick Boseman hype is just, I think, I don't know if even a performance that strong can stop it. But. maybe I only have it like that you know because mm-hmm. I felt like being you know edgy I suppose yeah Chadwick Boseman number two mm-hmm. three Delroy Lindo four Riz Ahmed and I think that places like the Golden Globes potentially could snub him yeah I think he's like that indie performance that will 
get nominated mm-hmm. at the Oscars. But I think it will be a long and difficult road for him. But it shouldn't be. Yeah. He was amazing. I love him. He should. Like, in any other year, I think he maybe would win. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, the performances, especially in this category this year, like Delroy Lindo, Riz, Anthony Hopkins, Chadwick, any other year, even Kingsley Benadir, any other year they could have won. But it's just crazy competition. I think Riz is pretty much a lock for the Oscars, at least. The Globes. Who knows? Fingers crossed. He deserves it. Yeah. Who do you have in that five My number. My number five. Yeah, yeah. So this number five. I unfortunately think it eventually will go to Gary Oldman. But I, as of right now, Stephen Young, who knows, you know? But the reason I pause is because he's more supporting. Yeah. From everything I've heard, he's supporting. That just makes me pause a little bit. However, the other people I have there, Kingsley Benadir, Lakeith Stanfield, you know, one night Miami, Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, John David Washington from Malcolm and Marie. We need to see the movie. Yeah, but if we do see it, and they're both amazing, some magic could happen. John David Washington could get that Oscar gold. I'd love to see that. Mm-hmm. And then I have two nominations that I suppose are kind of unexciting: Tom Hanks in News of the World. Oh. Both the Globes are definitely going to nominate him. I'm yeah. putting. I don't want to put News of the World on these lists. I'm just putting mm-hmm. it on in case the Academy just decides, well, you know, it would be funny nominating News of the World and snubbing. Promising a Young Woman or something like that. So I'm just putting him on there because he took up a Best Supporting Actor slot for Beautiful in the Neighborhood that could have went to Song Kang Ho, but Mm -hmm. whatever. Just I I like just breathe and get over it and it'll eventually go away. Ben Affleck then for The Way Back because The Way Back, Warner Brothers is kind of campaigning it, but it kind of has no chance. It's pretty much too late for that movie to really gain momentum. I'm only putting it on here because A, I love the performance, B, I love the movie, and C, they are campaigning it and sending around like screeners and stuff. So maybe, mm-hmm. but no. That'd be great. It um, would, yeah, he'd be great. Yeah, I think uh, maybe Mads Mikkelsen. I hear he's amazing in another oh, round. Oh, shit. That is I a forgot about film. another round, yeah. Yeah, it is a foreign film, but there is, what's his name? Um... Antonio Banderas got in for uh, Pain and mm. Glory last year. And Marina de Tavira, Yelitsa, you know. Yeah. I think he is a Golden Globe. I have him in my Golden Globe predictions. For... He's an outside shot, I think. Um, I don't have Stephen Yoon for Minari just because, as I said, I don't... One, I think he's being campaigned in the wrong category. And two, um, I just don't have a lot of um, faith in that movie being a all-around contender. I'm only putting it on there because I'm seeing momentum conversations. Yeah. So you're likely correct. You, I'd say you more than likely are correct, but I'm just putting it on here for shits and giggles. Like, why not? He is doing the campaigning. Like, I just saw a round table with, I think, him, Delroy Lindo, Riz Ahmed, Anthony Hopkins, and George Clooney, of all people, um, having a round. Why? Oh, the Midnight Sky. <laughs> Midnight Sky, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Wow. I guess they wanted to have a star in there. None of those guys are really big stars. Besides, I guess Hopkins could be a star, kind of. Um, yeah, I hope Hopkins wins just because he is easily the best. Him or Riz, but I think Chadwick is going to. Yeah. I here's the thing with Ma Rainey. Since I just didn't like the movie all that much, you know, I thought his monologues were very good. They definitely told a very good story, but. I just wasn't cracked about it, if I'm honest. It just didn't work for me. But there is that opportunity. You can never honor him again. Mm-hmm. So will they go for that? I personally would, as of right now, go for Riz Ahmed because I've only seen Ma Rainey, Sound of Metal, and The Five Bloods. I think Riz Ahmed just beats Del Roy Lindo, and Del Roy Lindo beats Chadwick Boseman by like a whole point. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Chadwick Boseman is winning. We have to get over it Yeah. eventually. I hope, Sir Anthony Hopkins, you can get another Oscar before it is too late. You deserve more than I one. agree. Uh, now on to Best Supporting Actress. Uh, this is another kind of tricky one. Um, I have Ellen Bernstein at number one right now, then Olivia Coleman, then Amanda uh, Seyfried, then Glenn Close, then Yoo Jung Yoon for Minari. We have the same top five, just in like a different order. So my yeah. number one, 
is unfortunately Amanda Seyfried just because everyone's saying she's number one. So I, I'm like, I haven't seen the movie, so yeah. I can't disagree. So I have to put her at number one. Mm-hmm. Then Olivia Coleman in The Father. She's, yeah. How is she in The Father? She's amazing, yeah. Um, she's definitely supporting, but yeah, there are a few scenes that ask a lot of her and she really does deliver. They also do an amazing, I don't want to spoil anything, but they do some cool stuff with her character and other actors too so she isn't in it as much as you would think but she's in it a good amount uh i think i know what you're talking about because they gave it away in the trailer oh they did i never watched the trailer i unfortunately did i don't watch the trailers anymore i think it's because of that that trailer but whatever it's not over it the way they do it and the way you're just as confused as he is throughout the whole movie until the end it's awesome Mm -hmm. But yes, Ellen Burstyn is my number three, who is so very good in Pieces of a Woman. Mm-hmm. She has that one scene too. She with just is the Kirby, mm. where they're in what like the dining but room. That, yeah, as I'm saying, like that whole one take. Oh, that is like cinema. Mm. It okay. is beautiful. It's it deserves crazy. it. That's all I'm saying. She would. I think. I think I heard this fact somewhere. If she was nominated. She she may be the oldest actress ever to be nominated. I would love that. Yeah. I would love that for her to get nominated for that. That would make me very happy. My four is Yu Jung Yoon from Minari. And my number five, who, if it, if this person is nominated, who knows, folks? Who like, knows? who yeah. knows? Like, I I personally just freaking loved Glenn Close in Hillbilly Elegy. I just... When I watched it, I was like, you know what, Glenn? I want you to win. Now, I also would like Ellen Burstyn to win. And I'm sure Yu Jung Yoon in Minari is so good. I'm sure she's a very touching performance in that film. And she likely deserves to win as well. But Glenn yeah. Close, God, I just, there's something about her. It was amazing. The makeup was fantastic. The glasses were so great. She carried She me. was so adorable. She carried the movie. Yeah, exactly. It was such a poor movie, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I've said, watchable, but like, eh, like if she wasn't in the movie, like if the grandmother character wasn't in the movie, I would not, I would have turned it off. Yeah, totally. But she carried it. She deserves it. It's a definition of supporting actress. She supported the movie. Yeah. Uh, Maria Vaklova, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, she's kind of the... um elephant in the room right now i guess she is number five um she's above glenn close. oh no she's tied with glenn close um yeah i think that's like a globes play um yeah it's like a if she's nominated there she'll win yeah that's a genre thing where like lupita or emily blunt like they'll get nominated sometimes even win but the academy is just not their kind of kind of thing oh i kind of agree yeah uh helena zangle she had hype before uh, news of the world is just kind of dying down. I'm sure she was great in it, but sorry. <laughs> uh, Dominique Fishback is gaining a lot of recent hype for Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, I saw yes, her. Yes, I have her on my honorable mentions. Yeah, she was in Project Power recently, I think, and she was good in that. Um, so yeah, I think she has an outside shot. She'd probably be the most likely, I think, um, to steal one of these five ladies' spots. Mm. I think Dominique Fishback, yes. Uh, Maria Baklova, as I also mentioned, you know, outside shot, but very much a shot, but kind of not really, but kind of. Yeah. However, there is one more that I, am, that I have to mention, and it's unfortunately kind of, but not really, um, because Annette Benning in The Report, Kathy Bates oh, in Richard yeah. Jewell, Jodie Foster in The Mauritanian. Yeah. Guys, if this happens, it's going to happen, you know? Uh, I just think it's. I just think it could happen. I, I. I don't know. Like they like to give that old actress that nomination, um, if she's very good in the movie, because you know she's playing. It could be like Rosamund Pike in A Private War, who I also have in um, one of the she like you know actress. She has a film coming out on Netflix in February that looks amazing because she's the best, one of the best actresses at the moment right. working in Hollywood. I love Rosamund Pike, but it could be like Rosamund Pike in A Private War. You know, a film that talks about real events, war crimes in like the past decade or so, but that could get a Globes nomination. That is very likely to get a Globes nomination, but will not get an Oscar nomination. But, you know, Kathy Bates broke in there for Richard Jewell. So if it's going to happen, it'll happen with Jodie Foster. Yeah. 
That's true. That category last year was crazy. Well, they kicked out J Lo and um, Zhao. Zhu, I always mess up her name. Zhao Shuzhen, um for Kathy Bates. I thought it was Zhao Shuzhen. Zhao Shuzhen, you're right. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think Jodie Foster is kind of like an Annette Benning in report. She may get nominated one or two places, but I don't see her happening in the uh, yeah. Oscars. Rosamund but, Pike in A Private War. May I just add, she deserved an Oscar nomination for that movie. She was very, very good. Mm -hmm. She did, yeah. Um, for this, this is kind of like actress. I have no clue who's going to win. Right now, Amanda kind of looks like the lead, but... She's the least, I haven't seen Minari, but she's the least impressive performance on this list. So it'd kind of be sad if she won. Kind of like Brad Pitt winning for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I thought player. he was the best in that category. I hated the supporting actor category last year. I, th I was like, I hated the Irishman and I just don't like Tom Hanks. Sorry, interweb, sorry world. I'm just not a Tom yeah. Hanks fan. It just doesn't do it for me. Um, so I was very frustrated with that category last year. and you know, throw out Song Kang Ho. Oh my God. It was just like a stab that. in the heart. So should have Sterling K. Brown for Waves. He was so good. Um, oh, I yeah. never saw that. You should. It's very good. Um, it's another A24 failure. But uh, yes, that's about it for Supporting Actress. So now we're moving on to Supporting Actor, where I think the current front runner is Daniel Kaluuya for Judas. I have two for Paul Racy. Mm -hmm. Then three, Leslie Odom Jr., yep. four, Sasha Baron Cohen, and five, Chadwick Boseman for The Five Bloods. It'd be ridiculous if you got nominated for The Five Bloods. That'd be that so would be upset. ridiculous, but um, he, I honestly believe that it is likely going to happen, that they're just going to go all out for nominating him because it's the last time they can. He, you know that feeling when you're watching the Oscar nominations and something really obvious happens that you're like, why didn't I think of that? You know? No, yeah. why did I not think that would happen? Like, you rule someone out who you should not rule out. Going back to Kathy Bates and Richard Jewell, when that happened, it was like the first no there was she was the first was name, the, yeah. the first category they named out, and it was like, was holy crazy. shit, of course, yeah. of course that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the same with Chadwick Boseman and Five Bloods. That is, I agree, but I don't want to agree. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, but it's not, it's reasonable. It's it is happen, ridiculous, honestly. Like, even like what but before he passed away when the movie came out in like june the supporting actor hype wasn't he everyone was like oh he did, he's in barely in the movie and people were like jonathan majors or clark peters would be the supporting actor now they're nowhere mm. to be seen and they are no they were really good they were better than him in the movie i mean he was barely in it mm. are they even i don't think they're even on here oh there it is all the way down uh but yeah what do you have? Do you have the same five? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, my number one is my baby, who is the person who deserves this, this win. Paul Racy, sir, in oh, Sound of did. Metal. Yeah. You fucking legend. Amazing. Amazing. Win yeah. that Oscar. Best Just supporting it, performance I've seen this year. I would be inclined to agree. I also really like Bo Burnham in Promising Young Woman, but yeah. he's not he's not going to get nominated, but he no. I think maybe that could be like I think Promising Young Woman could get a SAG ensemble nomination because yeah. the way they use their ensemble, like they have Jennifer Coolidge in the movie, but then they also have these really likable amazing actors from the most likable and amazing show, Glow. Mm -hmm. They have Glow actors who are amazing and wonderful play these absolute demons of people. It's brilliant mm -hmm. the way that they cast that movie. So yeah. I see that, but I, I'm getting sidetracked. I have number two, Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah, yeah. Gonna happen, I think. Yeah. It's pretty likely. Leslie Odom Jr., who was Sam Cooke, yeah? Yes, he was Sam Cooke, yeah. Like, I really didn't like him in the movie. He did a very good job, and I love Sam Cooke's music. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't like the role in the movie for some reason i think because it was a fictional conversation um yeah. you had a lot of freedom with the characters and stuff like that and i respect what they did i just didn't like sam cook in the movie so i just didn't really like the performance but sure he's probably gonna get it he's mm -hmm. not the best in the movie though by any means no um, i think king's sasha baron cohen oh but go yeah. ahead 
No, I was just saying I think yeah, Kingsley Kings Benadir be best in it, but he may be the second best. The guy who played the catches was also good. All of them were good. Everyone was good, yeah. Aldous Hodge probably has zero chance, but I was very happy really just that he was in the movie. Yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen, another person who I unfortunately think is going to get nominated. I didn't all, think he was that good. Out of all the trial of Chicago 7 people to nominate, they're going to go with him. I thought, you know, the guy who was also with him, like the kind of, um, the other, I can't think of his name. I can't even think of the actor because no one's talking about him. But he played Mark the other Martin? revolutionary. No, like the other progressive oh. with him. Oh, Jeremy Strong. Right. Is it Jeremy Strong? From Succession. Hold on. Let me just, let me just, no, I don't, I don't watch Succession. So just give me a second. Oh, I'm going to Google it, everyone. Succession. Um, yeah. Let's look at some of the other ones. Bill Murray, no chance. Stanley oh, Tucci, no yeah. chance. Yaya was good in that movie. I'd take him over Sasha, but mm. no. Oh, so would I, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really see anyone else. Yeah, here, wait, here he is. Jeremy Strong, Trial of Chicago 7. Yes, it is Jeremy Strong. I'm so sorry. No, he had a much darker skin tone in the movie than I think he does in real life. He was tan. Oh, oh okay. Again, living. Yeah. Um, yeah, he had a lot of hype before the movie came out, but he was barely, he didn't have a big role, so. Yeah. He had as much of a role as Sasha Baron Cohen, and he was better, in my opinion. Yeah. Mark Rylance is my number five. Mm -hmm. eh. That makes sense. Uh, oh, wait, no, shit. Not eh. I was thinking of Sasha Baron Cohen in my mind. Oh. He was much better than Sasha Baron Cohen. He was good. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, Frank Langella, who I think we all agree should be nominated, but <laughs> almost certainly won't be. No. I mean, he has Bill an album Murray. Spot, I think, but I don't know. It could be like that. You know, as I've said, Oscar morning. What the hell's going to happen? Yeah. Frank Langella. Like, Ooh, just, wow. No one really thought Jonathan Price was going to get nominated for lead actor, but there he was after two popes. Who did he steal it from? He stole it from someone Taren I really Egerton, wanted. He stole it from who else? Definitely Taron Egerton. There was one other one I was really upset about that he stole it from, but I can't think right now. It wasn't Daniel Craig. And, uh, I'm not going to try and think about it because it's going to yeah. just... It's going to... Yeah. yeah. Oh, Robert De Niro. People were upset with Robert De Niro. No, oh, I'm glad he didn't get nominated. He didn't really have a chance by the time those nominations came out. Oh my God, Adam Luke, Sandler for Uncut Gems. He deserved it. He was great. Lucas Hedges, though, for some reason people are talking about him. And then the obligatory Chadwick Boseman. No. Yeah. I think it's going to happen, but I agree. It shouldn't. Um... Why, yeah, I don't really see why does Supernova have a chance? I'm sorry, that's just wrong. It doesn't, yeah, no. Um, I don't know how David's, um, I don't know how to say his last name, for Nomadland is still in there. Apparently he's barely in it. Strathane, um, I think, but I can't, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's pretty much going to be these five. I think Daniel Kaluuya is probably going to win. Um, I yeah. hope Paul Racy wins, but. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. I'd just be happy with him being nominated. I would be very upset if they snubbed him. Very upset. That would be the like they that would be the big snub, you know. Yeah, that would be yeah, indeed. So now we're on oh. to best adapted screenplay. Where number one, I have One Night in Miami. Two, I have Nomadland. Three, I have The Father. Four, I have Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And that fifth spot, I think, is kind of open. And I put I'm thinking of ending. A very well written movie. I disagree with that, <laughs> but it is also my number five. <laughs> oh, really? mm, yeah, I okay. thought I'm thinking of anything was ridiculous, but whatever. It's like when I found out getting in there. What? I said it's better than News of the World getting in there. Yep, it it actually is, but you know, the fact that that movie it just it doesn't even matter the entire movie. Ugh. I'm sorry. It's just not. I'm thinking of anything. It's just not my type of movie, folks. It just is not for me. You know, it's very much in that category of mother, hereditary, and there's like first reformed as well. Yeah, you're naming a lot of good movies. No. Oh well, uh, isn't it funny the way you think they're good? Anyways, yeah. number one, Nomadland. Number two, One Night in Miami. 
But I'm going to switch that. I'm going to say The Father is actually number two. Number yeah. three, One Night in Miami. Number four, My Rainey's Black Bottom. And number five, I'm thinking of ending things. Yeah, so we have the same five. Yeah. Yeah, I don't What do know. you think will win? Win? Right now, P- Nomadland currently has the best chances. I haven't seen it. It just really doesn't... I don't understand how it's a screenplay kind of movie. Kind of seems to just like... Uh, vibe and hang around someone's life kind of movie um, i agree yeah one night in miami i think even if the actual movie could have got boring at times the lines and the discussion that was being had was great so i hope that one wins that's what i think currently is going to win. you could be correct there yeah the father's great um i don't know how much of that's for the script though i think other things oh okay I think it's definitely going to get nominated, though. On to the next script. Uh, we have original screenplay. I have Trial of Chicago 7 as the one. Soul as two. Three, I have Promising Young Woman. Four, Minari. And five, I have Judas and the Black Messiah. I'm so sorry. I'm just saying that before I get into my nominations. Okay, number Thank one you. is Trial of the Chicago 7. I think likely, very strongly, going to win. Yeah. Number two, what should win? Promising Young Woman. Number three, what I was apologizing for, Mank. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. I hope I not. just think it's going to be nominated. I agree, but I just hope not. So I'm willing it into existence by not putting it on there. Awesome. I love doing that. I do it all the time on this, you know, show, I suppose. I do it all the time. Remember when I said, ah, you Pretty will, much anything trying, I've ever said. You're trying to will Janelle Monet for Antebellum into existence, which didn't really happen. But It didn't really happen, but I wasn't expecting that movie to be fucking terrible. Yeah. Besides the point. Um, Minari, number four, seems kind of likely at this point, getting some buzz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And number five is Soul. Yeah, yeah. I hope it gets in there. It's picture chances. Mm-hmm. I think last time we did these predictions... I had Soul at number one, oddly enough. Um, I thought it was going to win, but no way it's going to win. I'd just be happy with it getting nominated. I, yeah. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the, the state we're in with Soul. Yeah. It, it just it loses. Some of these movies are losing momentum for no reason, but that mm-hmm. happens, you know? Yeah. Uh, my honorable mentions, I suppose. Sound of Metal. Oh, I suppose, yeah. I suppose, because yeah. very good at putting you in the shoes of the mm-hmm. person and really kind of making you struggle along with them, which is something I appreciate. I think it's something that a lot of people have been through where you feel like, or you see it in a lot of stuff, but you feel like something so insignificant that you think is insignificant, like say you're hearing or even just anything, but when it goes away, it derails your entire life. Your, mm-hmm. in, your very existence, it just kind of changes it. Yeah. Which I just thought was a really interesting approach. Mm-hmm. But then I also have The Five Bloods and Judas. Those are the only films I see breaking in. I loved The Five Bloods script, but uh, unfortunately I think it just doesn't really have it at the moment when it comes to mm-hmm. getting nominated. And then Judas and the Black Messiah getting some good buzz. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I took taking Mank's spot just because I'd rather see that over Mank. Um, yeah, but I think Trials, no matter what, probably going to be winning this anyway, so... The other ones are just honors to be with them. Um, Okay, now on to some more of the technicals. First up, we've got cinematography, where one, I have Nomadland, two, Mank is going to be nominated, three, The Five Bloods, (laughs) four, Judas and the Black Messiah, and five, News of the World. Uh, It looks good, Hmm. so they have that going for them. I have uh, number one, Mank. Number two, yeah. Nomadland. Number three, something I'm willing into existence, Tenet. Tenet, get that, oh, get yeah. that juicy it nomination, Tenet. Up. It's high up there, so mm. you're not crazy. No one's ever said that to me before, which is incredible. Number three, Tenet. Oh, please. I'd really like to see that. Number four, Defy Bloods. Incredible yeah. cinematography in Defy mm-hmm. Bloods. That uh, really deserves it. Number five, Judas and the Black Messiah. Just because it's getting that buzz right there. But I have two honorable mentions. One, it's just a... No, I have three, sorry. Malcolm and Marie. 
because yeah. you know black and white. black and white. Yeah, if it, if it could take ninth spot, that would be great. That would yeah. be really great. I mean, what was it in twenty for twenty eighteen movies? They nominated two movies in here that were black and white. They nominated both the foreign mm-hmm. films, Roma, and what was that Cold other War. one? Cold War. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So totally possible. Yeah, that's my you know honorable mention because it's just it's it's begging to be nominated mm-hmm. with that black and white it's like you know mm-hmm. it's like oscar's prostitution like you put your movie in black and white and you're like yeah you're giving me cinematography like you know you are and you can't resist it yeah. uh, no uh, the other one is news of the world like whatever please just don't nominate the movie please like it's so boring like i haven't even seen the movie but it's oh. just such a boring play yeah it looks it looks pretty typical i haven't seen it so i can't hate on it too much but i don't really want it to get in there because it doesn't seem that great yep and then also pieces of a woman it deserves to be in the conversation especially over ma rainey's black bottom which come on guys that movie did not have like yeah, like no. interesting mm-hmm. cinematography at all no. it was like looking at a canvas that had yeah. nothing on it it looks like a play honestly visually mm. which isn't what you want from a movie um i hope i'm thinking i'm thinking of ending things kind of like the five bloods the way they play with the aspect ratio is cool um, but yeah, yeah, sure. I, I hope Nomadland wins this. Manx cinematography didn't impress me that much, but it is the current front runner, sadly. Mm, because, as I've said, it is like Oscar prostitution if you put your film on black and white. Indeed. So now we have best costume design. My, I think Ma Rainey is probably going to win this. Two, I have Mank. Three, News of the World. Four, Emma. And five, I have Mulan. Mulan. Here, I have, I, have, I have two words for all the people on Goldery thinking that Mulan's going to get nominated. Two words, and it's going to completely blow you away, okay? Two I words. Think I, I think I know what they are. I, mm, no. Well, I, Maybe. Concentration no. camps. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Yeah. I don't think, honestly, the industry cares. I mean, they, Variety ran um, a story about that, and it got, like, no traction. Well... I have my fingers crossed that when people get to that ballot and they're like, really, Mulan? How about no? And they don't do it. I have, mm-hmm. I have a complete... No, I don't actually. I have a kind of different top five. Okay. I actually... Mm, yeah, I, I do. So, no, I actually don't. I only have one that's uh, kind of swapped out. Okay. So, I have rainy. Because, mm-hmm. why not, I suppose. Yeah. Two, Mike. Because the same reason as Ma Rainey. Three, Emma, same reason as Mank, which is yeah. the same reason as Ma Rainey. Number four, News of the World, same reason as Emma. Five, I'd love to see this. Promising young woman. Four. Oh, yeah. One costume and one costume only. I the nurse it. outfit. Yeah. 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 It's pretty low down, but yeah, it's, it's very low. shot. <laughs> Let's just say they're tied and leave it at that. Yeah, um, yeah, I can see that happening, but I mean, I think, did Joker get nominated for costume design, or was that makeup? It, oddly enough, it, it was it nominated for costume design, it was out of production design, which was a crime, that's because they, kinda, I thought the production design was great. That's kind of nominating a movie just for one costume. Mm. None of the other costumes were that impressive, I don't think. Um, but yeah, these... Cool. These aren't nominated by the whole academy. This is just by the costume design branch. I just think yeah, they do. Part, it's an effort. All the branches do it, and then it's the entire academy who votes, who wins. Yeah. Yeah. So let's I hope don't... to all the costume designers watching. I hope you have a conscience. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm we'll saying did not vote for Milan. We'll indeed find out if the costume designers have a conscience. They like their period pieces. Um. Now we have editing. Right now I have the father at number one, just because I'm willing that into existence, too. Then two, I have okay. Nomad Land. Three, Trial of Chicago 7. Four, Judas. Five, t- Tenant. Just because I think that's kind of hard. I have similar. One is Trial of the Chicago 7. Number two is mm-hmm. Nomad Land. Number three, Mank. Number four, The Father. And number five is Judas and the Black Messiah. No, I did not put Tenet, but I think Tenet is like six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tenet has a big, has a good shot there. 
Uh, I think probably Mank has a better shot, but I'm just trying to shut Mank out of everything. Uh, the, editing, the editing in The Father, the way like certain scenes happen and then they completely loop around and you're at the beginning of that scene and you're like confused with him, what you're forgetting and what's happening. It's a very hard film to edit and whoever edited it did an amazing job. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I think I would love to see the father just boosh up those yeah. holes. It'd be very great. Um, you know, we also have just Ma Rainey, Tenet, The Five Bloods, Sound of Metal, One Night in Miami. Whatever nomination. Yeah, Sound of Metal, I could see that. There was some good editing. Ma Rainey, uh, yeah. <laughs> A Promising Woman had some good editing, too. Um, yeah, but yeah. that's the one thing. I just don't, I'm just trying to be semi-realistic yeah these I are know that might of, seem ridiculous editing is kind of saved for like the biggest contenders for the most part um now we're off to production design where i i did decide to put make in there i think it's gonna win i probably rightfully so because that was well done uh then news of the world then ma rainey then move on again then tenant i have a few other things there. Okay. Oh, okay, shit, you don't have fuck. Okay. I suppose I'll find out about this in a minute, but I feel very stupid now. Mank, the father. Put the father on there. Yeah. Does is it impressive? Like I um, like it's kinda like I don't know I honestly was kind of confused when I saw it that high. It's kind of just um a typical like uh, what do you guys call it? Like flat in England. Um it's kind of just I'm not in you know, England. Yeah, no, I know. I mean in the European area. But they call it they call yeah, it well, in the movie. Um but they very do very much so not an English person. I'm just putting that out there every Yeah. <laughs> um but the way they move certain objects around within the production design, just like mm -hmm. subtly to confuse you as to like what's going on. Um that was well done, but the actual design didn't really impress me. That's why I was thinking of it, because I heard about that element in the film. I just want to comment on one thing here. If the Midnight Sky gets a nomination over Ad fucking Astra, I would be devastated. I wouldn't mind. Devastated. Me. I'll take Midnight Sky over Tenet. No. Yeah. No. My number four is Ma Rainey. Number four, shit. No, number three is Ma Rainey. Number four is Tenet. And number five, this is me manifesting here. Since I'm not a fan of concentration camps and ethnic yeah. cleansing, I decided to put Birds of Prey on the list. Oh, yeah. Mm. It, it has decent shots. It's not a 101. Um, Fair enough. You know, if you're, if you're not 101, isn't, isn't it good for you that you have 82 to 1 chances? Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. I think no matter what Mank is going to win just because it's a period mm. piece. And that was actually well done. So good for them. That'll be your one Oscar of the night, Mank. Um, <laughs> now we have best sound, where I think the obvious winner should be Sound of Metal. Two, I, mm. I'm giving it to Mank again just because they did a good job making it sound like one of those old movies. Three, Soul had great sound design. Four, I didn't. I don't want to put it in here because the sound was horrible. <laughs> But Tenet, there's probably going to yep. nominate it. It has the second best shot just because, I don't know, the sound designer branch has a hard on for Chris Nolan for some reason. Um, and Ma Rainey at five. Uh, we have the same five. Number one is Sound of Metal. Obviously, win. Mm -hmm. Number two is Mike. Don't really care. I just know it's getting nominated. Yeah. Number three is Tenet. I love Tenet, okay, everyone? I love me some Tenet. I hated Tenet the first time I saw it because I'm like, this movie makes no fucking sense because I, I got to see it in IMAX and you know all I heard in the movie was? Imagine like a really loud bang yeah. for two hours. That's what Tenet was in IMAX, okay? This film should not be nominated for sound. It, it would be a crime. We made a point of not nominating Tenet for sound in our own awards because it was horrible sound. It was. Jesus Christ. Horrible. Yeah. Four, Soul, five, Ma Rainey. Yeah. I hope Sound of Metal wins. It's the front runner. That easily has oh, yeah. sound. Um, best animated feature. We don't really even need to cover this. 
Soul is winning. It's really who else gets nominated with it, which is Wolf Walkers, Onward, Over the Moon, and Earwig and the Witch, I think. I, I think say the Willoughbys. The Willoughbys, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if they'll put... Uh, maybe. That's in a, two Netflix <laughs> movies in there, but... Mm. They did last year, so... They Who deserved knows? it. Either way, Soul is going to win. Not really much to talk about there. Uh, and then we're back at picture. So those are the pretty much the main categories and a few technicals covered for this year's upcoming Oscars. Just about two months. I believe in about two weeks, we'll be getting um, both Golden Globe nominations and SAG nominations very soon. So those will be exciting. Oh, wow. Yeah, very soon. February 3rd, I think. Um, so yeah. Definitely a lot more Oscar season is heating up. So definitely a lot more Oscar coverage coming your way. But in the meantime, Ben, is there anything you would like to plug? Just as I'm sure Gator knows, at the Council Pod. Yes. Because we are also going to be presenting our awards very soon. And, uh, you know, we made some very good nominations. Some people had seen Sound of Metal, made the good decision to nominate it. Very good choice. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Thank you all very much for listening to me and my predictions. And thank you very much for having me. Indeed. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to. And that is all. <laughs>